So I've just been proposed to. A week ago, I found out that my mom is dying and I'm now finding out that my fiance and my mom have decided that we're gonna get married next month. Hey people, people, how you are doing today? It's your girl Destiny here and welcome to my channel. How you are doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So this video is the part two video of the video I posted previously of the lady that shared our story of why the F did I get married at the age of 20. If you haven't seen that first part, go check it out because it will give you full context of it. I personally am seriously like itchy to hear the many part of the story what went down because she went on in the first part to talk about some of the backstory that happened, how um, how she met her boyfriend at the age of five and she had a crush on him the fast forward when they were 17 they started dating and then she found out that her mom had cancer and then the mom made the joke of who oh, would the boyfriend marry her before she died and the boyfriend decided to propose to her and the fact that her family was in on it his his own family was in on it agreeing for both of them to get married at that young age of 20 and how she had so much emotions going on knowing that her mom is not going to, she has limited time with her mom but yet there's this proposal and all that and the boyfriend just let her know that they are getting married the next month anyway guys i'm ready to hear the remaining part of the story because i really want to find out if she's still married to this man right now because she has a ring on her finger if you haven't seen the first part of that video please go check it out because it will give you full context of what we're talking about here on this channel and for you to follow up on the story so go check out the first video so you can join on it okay so i'll link it down in the description box so you can just click on it watch it and then come back to this all right so let's go hear more of the story and then we'll come back and talk more this is part four of why get married at 20. So I've just been proposed to, a week ago I found out that my mom is dying and I'm now finding out that my fiance and my mom have decided that we're gonna get married next month. I'm so confused with everything that is going on that I have to sit down and breathe and just process everything that's going on because one, I'm still confused with when I found out a week ago that my mom is about to pass away and I'm still processing all the emotions with that. Two, I'm processing what just happened to me, I just got proposed to and I wasn't even expecting it. And three, how the hell am I gonna plan a wedding in a month? As I was spiraling, all of my fiance's family and my fiance is telling me to calm down, it's going to be okay, and that we're just going to have a good time. We're going to go back to my family home, see my mom, celebrate, and eat some food, and just take today for what it is. So the next month was just going to be some makeshift wedding planning. I contacted every venue not caring what it looked like, just inquiring for the next month availability on the 21st of November. I scoured the internet for a bunch of secondhand dresses and I was deciding who the hell is even going to be invited to this wedding. I, didn't, I don't know. I was still trying to figure out how I was going to pay for this wedding. Bittersweet enough. Bittersweet enough, my mom told me that her insurance money came from her life insurance and that she's been paid out and that we're going to use this money to fund the wedding. So everything felt kind of real and fake all at once. That made it feel even more real because, I mean, finding out that you're getting paid out because you're dying is just the most insane thing. And I was so blessed at the time because my mom mustered all of the strength to go to every single venue that we had scouted out and said that they had an availability for the next month. She gathered all of the decorations that we needed for the wedding. She was in contact with a bunch of my vendors. She did so much more than I had ever expected to after everything that was going on. We were sorting out photographers, videographers, catering, and the, every single thing that happens in a wedding. And I was getting really stressed out because I was thinking, I don't need all of the bells and whistles and whatnot, but my mom <laughs> insisted that we go all out because she just wants to see her daughter have as much of a dream wedding as she could. And as the month went on, everything fell into place. One of the venues called me back straight away and I, as I was on the phone, they were asking me about my inquiry for the 21st of November. And the lady on the other side of the phone said, hey, I've been in the exact same place. I'm gonna do whatever I can to help you. The lady who managed the venue at LLE Estate, her name is Athena. She did everything in her power to sort out all of the other vendors for me and literally acted as a wedding planner. She did everything that she could with the vendors to get everything that I could have at cost price and just an angel during this tumultuous time. And then my secondhand wedding dress, I was fingers crossing that it was gonna fit me and thank God when it arrived, it fit me and it was cheap as chips. And deciding who was gonna be at my wedding, I didn't have to call a lot of people because we just came out of COVID and the borders were still closed. So the, all the people that I could ever invite were actually just from New Zealand. 
We even learnt a full choreographed first dance thing in a month. Every single thing just fell into place and it was like something was watching over me during this time. And during all this time I mentioned to my fiance, hey do you remember back when my mom was about to go into the chemo treatment and I said that I would go bald with her? Yeah, well, I was thinking that I would, I could still go bald and raise money for cancer awareness, but it was just the thought, um, we can do it after the wedding, and I just think it would be nice for us to give back to the community that helped my mom on her journey. And it was just a fleeting thought, and he looks at me and he goes, actually, wait a minute, do you want to just shave your head at our wedding? I'll do it with you. And I don't really know what I was thinking at that moment, but I was like, yeah, why not? Why don't we do it then? There's a portion of the wedding where Filipinos typically will give money to the bride and groom during like a traditional dance. Why don't we just use that money, because we don't need it, to then give back to the community that served my mom? Perfect. So amongst all of the chaos, we also had decided that we were going to shave our heads at our wedding reception without anyone knowing. And eventually, the 21st of November, 2020 came. This is part five of why I get married at 20. So it's the 21st of November, 2020, and it's my wedding day. I've had three hours of sleep the night prior because I was up writing my vows all night. At this point, I'm running on straight fumes. I'm not even thinking about the fact that I'm about to be shaving my head in a couple of hours. I'm up at 5 a.m. because I've decided that I'm gonna do all of my bridesmaids makeup and my own. And then I guess the rush of the wedding day begins. There was not a single thing that went wrong in the lead up of me walking down the aisle. And if there was, I did not notice it. I remember being in the powder room of the wedding venue, just waiting for everything to settle in. I remember looking at my mom, taking her both of her hands and looking her in the eyes and saying, you know, you're walking me down the aisle, right? And she was, she was in denial that she was walking me down the aisle. And she told me that, no, definitely your father is. And I said, no, the only way I want my wedding is if you walk me down the aisle. I did not plan to cry during this. <laughs> so she nods her head, we sit and wait patiently as we wait for the organizers to give us the green light to make our way around to walk down the aisle. And then it's time and we're behind this huge hedge and around the corner are all the people that we know and love in one space. I'm full of excitement. I'm holding my mom's hand. We're gonna go down the aisle together. I'm so ready. I have. I couldn't be more ready for this moment. As soon as I turn that corner and I see all of the people rise in their seats and my soon-to-be husband bawling his eyes out, all they can do every step of the way to the altar is just try hold back all of my tears from falling down my face but I couldn't stop it. And so I have no wedding photos of me smiling down the aisle because all I can feel is thankfully having my mom by my side walking me down the aisle before she leaves me. The uncertainty of what the hell this marriage is going to mean for me at 20 and just being surrounded by every single person that we love. We get down to the end of the aisle. My mom passes me off to my soon to be husband and we have the ceremony. And in true fashion of myself and my family, there were a few mishaps, but it made the day even better. My cousin who was reading for the reading was late and ran into the middle of the ceremony to come and say his reading at the time of it. So the priest had announced that it was ready for the second reader and he wasn't there yet. And everyone was looking around and you just see him bolt through the field to go and give off his reading and he does that and when we get to the altar and it's time for us to kiss and you may kiss the bride moment like we forgot to kiss we were so overwhelmed and didn't know what was going on that we just didn't kiss <laughs> then the priest had to tell us to kiss and then all of a sudden the ceremony was over and we went straight into the reception the speeches given at the reception were incredible my father spoke my husband's father spoke and i'm so glad he did because little did we know that we were gonna lose him a year later and then my sister spoke and alistair's brother spoke and then we had our own speech too we ate we laughed we cried there was so much emotion in that room 
I can't even explain how beautiful of a night it was. And then it was finally time for our first dance. We looked up to the audience and we said, hey guys, so you're probably expecting us to have our traditional Filipino dance where you give money to us and you put it in our clothes. But um, tonight we actually don't need that money and we're gonna be taking all of the money that you brought tonight and giving it back to those who helped my mom on her cancer journey. And in doing so, we are going to be shaving our heads in solidarity with my mother. I could not stop shaking as I announced that. And you look around the room and I, everyone's kind of confused. They don't really understand what's going on or I don't even think they had processed what I had said until they saw my husband sitting in a chair in the middle of the reception, me with some clippers, and I take the first pass around my husband's head and his hair falls to the ground and immediately everyone understands what's going on. As I'm clipping his hair, all you can see is a mixture of grins from ear to ear and tears streaming down faces and money being put in front of us. There was clapping, yelling, celebrating, crying, wailing, all of it. After I'd cleaned off my husband's head, it was my turn next. Sat in the chair, looked at my husband, nodded my head, and he took the first pass over my head. I looked all around the room and I felt like I couldn't hear a single thing. I just felt like everything was moving in slow motion. All the emotions that I felt from my family were for joy and pain and pride and sorrow for everything that this kind of meant to all of us. And the whole time my mom is grinning ear to ear, tears down her face, just shaking her head. Finally shaking all of the rest of the hair off of me. I was completely bald and I looked straight at my mom. I gave her a huge hug and she was like, that's my damn daughter. <laughs> we celebrated and we wooed and we cheered and, and we raised $4,000 that night and gave it to the Cancer Society. Then we partied the night away. Two young 20 year olds, bald, officially married. <laughs> and I am forever grateful that my mom was able to walk me down that aisle, party with me all night. And, I, and now that I look at it, I'm really happy that it all happened because my husband's father was there too. And we didn't know that he would be passing a year after. So this night was incredibly special and as the night came to a close everything that my mom had wanted to do in this life also came to a close and that is part five of why i get married so young i have more <laughs> this is part six of why the fuck did i get married at 20. so our wedding is done we're both bald me and my husband and we've planned a trip with my family to have our final family trip with my mom before she passes. So we make our way down to Queenstown, New Zealand, and as soon as our trip starts, my mom's body starts to give up. It's like her and her body knew that it had completed everything that it wanted to in this life and that it was ready to rest. A lot of the trip, it was just us staying at our accommodation and taking in the views from there. Those were gonna be the final moments where she could laugh and banter and dance around and make jokes with us. When the trip ended, me and my husband, my sister and her husband all decided that we would stay in the family home until my mom passed away. And as the days got on, you could see her body get weaker and weaker. We eventually had to be on day shifts and night shifts looking after her because you couldn't leave her alone. She didn't have the energy to hoist herself up to vomit if she needed to and we didn't want her to choke in her sleep so we were taking shifts um, looking after her in the night her eyes went from bright white and started to mellow down into like a deep yellow and every day she would say less and less words and in the last couple of days that we had with her she was no longer saying anything at all but we did our best to let her know that we loved her and in any way that she could she let us know as well whether it was with a small hand squeeze or a tiny little nod and on her final night with us I remember going up to her cuddling her and saying 
I hope you know I love you so, so much. And off and on hearing her speak for a couple of days with all of the energy she had, she said, I love you too. And I was full of joy. I shot up. I ran to my sister. I ran to my husband. I ran to my dad. I was like, please come, 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 come. Like what mommy's speaking, like she's saying, I love you. She spoke, she said something, please come, come, come. And we all rushed into the bedroom and every single person got to hug her, tell her that tell her that they loved her and she to everyone got to say that she loved us back with the last bit of energy that she had and then the next morning on the 12th of january 2021 we knew it was her time and we all gathered around her i had her in my arms and we just saw each breath she took get shallower and shallower until she was no longer breathing. We were surrounded with all of our family, all my cousins and my aunties and uncles, and wow. it was a tremendously sad time, but she was surrounded by everyone that loved her the most. As you do, we went into planning her funeral and all of that, and in the midst of everything, my photographers from my wedding asked me if they could post some of the photos of our wedding in their portfolio. And to me, of course, all of that work is theirs and they deserve to be able to share some of the art that they've captured. So I told them yes. And after what seems like hours after them putting up their photos for their portfolio of our wedding, news outlets were contacting them left, right and center and all of it came back to us. Part seven of why the fuck did I get married at 20? So I've just lost my mom. She's passed away and we've had her funeral so and I still have a million and one news outlets contacting me for the story about my wedding and why I shaved my head. There was a lot of emotions going on at that time because I was grieving the loss of my mom. I had news outlets contacting me all the time and or what something that I thought was going to be an intimate moment between my family became this huge blown up thing. But I took it in my stride and I saw it as an opportunity to share a story that I'm sure there's so many parts that everyone can relate to. It got so much traction that eventually one of the news outlets actually bought the rights to my wedding story and was just and started distributing it and from there it was an endless flurry of seeing my wedding story on all sorts of platforms none of which were coming genuinely from me and i would read all of the commentary and there was some good commentary and there were people who were so inspired and loved it and touched and there was the other side of the internet who were angry that i did it and i was an attention seeker and and with all of this commentary from all these different articles and all of these platforms, I finally felt like I had to come and tell this story myself. So I hopped on TikTok, took a clip of my wedding, explained myself, chucked it up and didn't think much of it. And I woke up to almost 100,000 followers who are invested in this journey. I had messages from people in every corner of the world trying to connect with me to tell me about their stories and how much my story has helped them and it all felt really surreal. But from it all, I managed to realize that I could take my grief and turn it into something powerful and intentional. It was a really weird feeling being a three-time uni dropout, 20 years old, married, just lost my mom with no plan of what I was doing with the rest of my life. This all of a sudden opened a world to me that I didn't know possible and I always like to think that it was the final gift that my mom left for me because she knew that I was so lost. And if there was one thing that I always loved doing, it was storytelling. And so she left me with this platform of people that I can now tell my stories to. From there, I continued to share my stories of navigating my life and kept growing my audience and all of my friends on this platform. And it opened up an immense amount of opportunity to me and completely changed the trajectory of what I thought was possible for myself.
I was still working in retail and desperately wanted a way out. I was applying to every single job that I could that was involved in social media and short form video making and all of that and just keep getting declined, 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 declined. But eventually my sister-in-law through a mutual said that there was a job opening at this, this small business who was also looking for someone to do some short form video for them. So as soon as that fell into my lap, I leaped at the opportunity to apply, applied, got to know the people, fell in love with everything about it, but knew that I was underqualified as fuck. And every day passed after those interviews, I was praying and praying and praying that I got the job. And finally, the employer called me, sitting at the top of a retail ladder, packing away some clothes. And he essentially said, hey, um, we really like your vibe and all, but we don't know that we can hire you right now. So I'm sorry, but I don't think I can give you a job. And I gripped the phone harder and I <laughs> told this man on the other side of the phone, I swear if you don't hire me, I'm gonna jump off the top of this ladder that I'm currently on in the retail store because I cannot work in retail a day longer. And on the other side of the phone, you can hear him take a big sigh and he says, fuck it. I'll be in contact with you in two or three months. We end the phone call and I cannot stop crying. I finally found my way out of retail. I finally found my way into social media, everything that I've ever wanted, all of the storytelling dreams could come true. And now I have my own career as a short form video strategist at the company, The Attention Seeker. And I've been there two and a half years now. And I'm currently sitting in New York City because of all of the opportunities that that's been able to give me. I've kind of rushed through the whole end of that story, but there's a lot to unpack still. I'm just glad that you're here to hear it all. And I guess it all started with the teeny little crush I had at five years old on some random kid in my class. Wow, this is, this is so like, this is such a very emotional story. And I don't like, I feel all mushy mushy here in this already. I'm like, please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this entire story down in the comment section. But as always, keep it respectful, guys. Please be respectful down in the comment section. But yeah, I find this story, I don't really even have much to say about it, but I find this story very, very, very um, emotional. And I'm happy for her. I'm happy that she's happy. Like, I always say, like, even though I don't agree with certain things, like getting married early, I know that that does not mean that that's for everybody. If she's happy, I'm happy for her. And the the way things play out in life, life is actually a very funny place that there's a whole lot of possible possibility. But the truth is that know who you are, what you are, and move accordingly. And always ask God for direction and all that. And I'm happy that she's living the dream that she has always wanted and able to tell a story the way she wanted. But this is why when story is being told and all that, I'm coming back here to actually to say why I don't. Because some people will come and say, what's a handle? Can you leave a social media handle and all that? And I always say this in my videos, which I always this keep saying and all that. Yeah, on this channel, the only reason I don't share handles and all that is the fact that I don't have control of how people are going to receive it. And sometimes when people receive things like this, it come, they receive it in such a negative way. And sometimes that hate can be passed on to the creator. And this has happened multiple times to me. This channel has been reported for sending hate to a creator before. And that was why I stopped putting anybody hanged or leaving any trace. Like... I understand that sometimes these stories and funny, funny enough, this story may come out and you guys will love it. And sometimes you guys may not love it and people will, and it's not even my audience. Like you guys on this channel, you guys are amazing. We have amazing conversation. Yeah. And you guys know, like my regular audience, you guys know why I don't do this, but there'll also be some new people that will come and like, Oh, you're doing this. Da, 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 why are you using this content without credit? Because I am not ready to send hate to anybody. And she clearly just said it that 
when the a story broke out, a lot of people, some people took it positively, some people took it negatively. And I understand that part that people will take it in a different form of way, but it's fine. That's the reason I don't, because I will not be, my platform will not be the source of where people use as an avenue to go send hate to another human being. And like I said in my disclaimer, if you are a creator and I use your content and you want me to tag you to put your name on the video in the description of this video, please feel free, reach out to me. I would gladly, I would gladly do it. It's not a big deal. I would do it. Like... It doesn't like I would really love to do it, but because I know how the internet works, that for her, I'm so happy for her. I'm happy she's young, she's living her best life. But one thing I would say is that she should also find herself because sometimes when we do things for people, and I understand that everything worked out perfectly well, sometimes when we do things just because for someone, I am not a fan of that, like doing things for the sake of someone or for get emo. Like in things like this, I would just probably let my mom know like as much, but which is even a dicey stuff because she's not going to be here. She's dying and that's a very sensitive thing. But I personally, I am talking, speaking about myself and I'm not trying to downplay what she did or amazing life that she's living. But I personally, I will not make such you step, especially knowing who I, who, what I know now, I know who I am and what I am. I will not take that you step to make such big life-changing um, decision. Maybe if I was 20 like her, I would have done that. But sometimes, some things happen for all reasons. So, yeah, I'm happy for her. And congratulations, girl, for on your wedding and your life. I wish you all the best. Anyway, guys, please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this amazing story time down in the comment section. But as always, please keep it respectful. You're on this channel. We're allowed to disagree, but we do it in a respectful way. So go ahead, feel free, and share your thoughts. Share this video with somebody that you want to be part of the conversation because that's what we do here. We have banging conversation. So go on and share this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, smash the like button because this helps YouTube to push out my content for more people to see. And that will be you supporting this channel and this girl here. So go on and do that. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Do see.